Hi everyone, Arjunal Page, and this is going to be the start of my page, and I will I'm going to show you how that came to be. I just didn't want to uh, waste time on waiting for the glue to uh, and the paint to dry. I'm putting it this aside for a minute, and I want to show you how to go about it. This is just the back, the white backing of a paper napkin that I usually dye with a homemade sprays. They are made from gel food coloring and water. I don't have measurements. I just put some drops in of the gel food coloring, add water, and then I test it to see if it's vibrant enough for my taste. So I've got <laughs> lots and lots of this just so you can see how uh, varied it can be and I like to do it on paper napkins because they are easy to uh, work with if you have if you leave the white some parts white then they disappear into the background when you use the gl uh, glue and it's very versatile now you don't have to have this sprays you can also use watercolors distress inks I will uh, give you some a demonstration so usually I use the two uh, pieces of the backing of a paper napkin because then I get two kinds of um, I don't know how to call it some the, the first one will be more solid the other one will will be more like the page I showed you or like this so what I do, I, I take the sprays, I just picked random ones, I've got turquoise, some magenta and yellow. Most of the time I just, something doesn't, okay, this one, bad, I don't know why, let's take another one, just, okay, red. I do it randomly and I let this just do it, its thing. That's what I love with the paper napkins. It's, it spreads easily and it's really interesting. I don't try to control it and then I get so many variations and interest. Now, the, one of the things to remember is always do it on something like a, a plastic bag or something like that or silicone mat not because you don't want to uh, to have a mess underneath it, it just because the paper napkin will be wet and you want something that you can lift and put it aside to dry now of course you can cover everything you can let them mix or you can leave white spaces whatever you want so this is only one example and of course the underneath I can't lift it really right now because it's wet the underneath layer will be a, a little bit different so moving this aside let's take something else so just a silicone mat. This is a silicone mat for baking and I use it a lot. And here we go. For, I, it can also be, I can just do something like this. And just place it like that. And now I have a, just a puddle of paint. And I can also take water and help it along. So there are all kinds of stuff that you can do. I can also lift it gently. Again, the more wet it gets, the, it's more difficult to lift it without uh, tearing it apart. So again, I can take some watercolors and let's take some brush. More water 
and again just put it randomly I can add water and as I said you can also use distress ink I'm just picking random colors it really doesn't matter for the sake of the demonstration just so you can see how versatile this is and just let it be of course you can scrunch it beforehand and do all kinds of stuff just have fun with it as you can see <laughs> I really had a lot of fun so moving this aside that's a how I make the background that I'm going to use uh, I've glued it uh, to my page this is just a sketchbook I've glued it with white a glue that I added just a little bit of water again I don't have measurements it's more a feeling that the glue won't drag the napkin another thing that I like about uh, using the napkin is the texture that I get and with the paper napkin I get this kind of interesting spread it's the paint the spray this is dispersing differently differently than if I use the spray directly on this uh, paper so that's the beginning so at first I was going to go with one of um, the paper napkins that are solidly colored but then I decided to go with this it was more interesting and I was thinking that it would be good uh, that I have white space I'm <laughs> getting used to having white space so I think here it's a little bit more the glue is not completely dry so I'm going to let it be for a few minutes and I'll come back I'm back and here is the stencil I want to use on top of this background I want to create interest and pattern in the back it doesn't have to be a mandala and I've ordered it this is from Aliexpress all the stencils I'm going to use today are from Aliexpress and basically it doesn't even have to be a stencil you can create pattern with anything as long as you are repeating the same uh, element so I have some white acrylic paint here and I've got a, a makeup sponge and what I'm going to do is just start stenciling I'm dabbing for excess now I'm not I don't want it to be a complete a, a solid white I want the color to pick through and I've picked this a stencil only because it was large enough for the pattern to practically merge with the white spaces that I have in the background I'm not concerned about uh, being uh, perfect with the stenciling it's just something to uh, create a pattern in the back interest you can take uh, stamps and stamp away you can do many things do all kinds of mark making in the back to create a pattern so basically as you can see I'm just stenciling and in some parts it's more visible in some parts less and it's merging with the white spaces so I'm just continuing with this again I'm not concerned about being precise I'm moving quite uh, quickly with this probably need more acrylic white acrylic paint
Let's see. Mm, nice. I just want a little bit more. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white acrylic paint and go over uh, some areas that I want a little bit more. And I'll be back when it's dry so we can continue to the next uh, <laughs> stage. Okay, so I want more details in the back and I want uh, I wanted some text. I've picked this stencil and I want the word wonder in the back. Again, this is part of the background, adding uh, details and pattern. And I've put uh, here some citrus green acrylic paint. I'm using the same sponge I've used uh, before and I hope it will go nicely with the rest of the background. I don't want something uh, that would be too prominent. So I'm just stenciling and I still got a little bit of white on the sponge. So I think it's taming <laughs> the citrus uh, green. Let's see, yeah, this looks nice. So I, I'm just going to spread this around the page. And again, this is just to create some kind of more interest and pattern. And I know that in some places you can't read the word, it doesn't matter. I could easily gone with a flower, a leaf, or whatever, just to go around and add something to the background. I need more. Okay, let's see, let's put one here. Yeah, and I think I want some off, going off the side. Any kind of pattern that I do, I like it to go off the border uh, of the <laughs> page I think it looks more organic this way but completely up to you let's put just a little bit more here <laughs> I'm just trying to add interest without covering all the white spaces I'm quite proud of me <laughs> leaving white spaces. Okay, I think this is enough. Oh, so, moving this aside, I want to go now for my focal point. And my focal point is this peacock. And I've uh, blocked the areas that I didn't want with masking tape. And it's supposed to be like this, I think. It will go here. Now, paints. I was envisioning something, I don't know, turquoise green and I don't know, so I've picked some colors. I've got here some deep green, some oxide green, some <laughs> emerald green, and some, what this one, some metallic green. Whatever, we'll see what happens. I'm just going to play with the colors. What I, I think I'll do is put a little bit of each one and just play as I go with the colors. I don't want a solid color, then it looks flat and uninteresting. Of course you can pick whatever colors you like and we'll see what happens. Okay, 
So again, same <laughs> makeup sponge and I'm going to start with this dark green. I'm not cleaning my uh, sponge. I still have a little bit of the citrus green. Don't care. I said that I want variation in the color, so I'm just going with it. And I can always put a first layer of one of these greens and then go on top and add something that I feel is needed if I don't like the color so as I said just playing mm. I think I will add the metallic green later on just need to dab the excess now it won't be a perfect a uh, print or whatever stenciling because I have a lot of wrinkles and texture from the paper napkin I don't care there are always ways to make it more a uh, precise if you want afterwards this is just a first layer of the picker. I haven't even used yet the metallic green. And now for the metallic, I'm just putting it in several places, like adding some highlights. maybe a little bit more of the metallic green just so it would be a little bit more noticeable That's it for now. Okay, lifting. Yeah. Now I'm going to let this uh, dry completely, and then I'm going to work on making making it more uh, prominent, whatever, <laughs> more precise, more refined for that matter. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and I've got Posca pens, uh, turquoise, and green. I've got Uniball, um, what they called, where is it, Uniball, <laughs> Signal, yeah, Uniball Signal, I've got white, I've got gold, I've got some uh, acrylic marker, uh, gold from the cheap store, and let's begin. So, I just want to add some details like here I don't like it so I'm just going and doing something like this I can just add details or subtract with white and I can also uh, give more definition by adding some contour lines if it's with gold or the white it really up to you how you want to do it like here if I want to do 
like this so it would be a little bit more noticeable I can do some correcting with the white <laughs> but you can also do it with a correction fluid if here I stenciled and it didn't go so well I can go in with the white and again give it more definition or with the gold or with whatever that is working for you there are no rules for it I can decide to go with the gold all over and do control lines for each part of the stencil don't know how much of it you can see sadly metallics and all kinds of shiny things can hardly be seen in a video So I'm just making it more defined and maybe just adding some details I'm not really concerned about how precise it is I'm, I'm more uh, I'm more concerned for the parts to be defined it doesn't have to be picture perfect I think the gold adds a little bit more interest not only in defining So I'm just adding in some places quite randomly I'm not going to uh, do all the parts just well basically I'm more adding some highlights to each part than contour line all the way so this is going to take some time so I'm going to continue and then I'll be back. Okay, so I finished doing this. I, another thing that I've thought about, you can also use a gel roll pens to do the same thing. And I hope you can see maybe part of uh, the metallics. I don't know. So this is it. That's my page. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.